Dead bodies uh, believed to be from a massacre carried out earlier this week in southern Tripoli. Our chief correspondent Stuart Ramsey reports from the scene. I've come to the Hamis compound, which is one of the largest compounds, military compounds after Babalzizia, probably the biggest. It was thought to be virtually impregnable. It was taken. It has been cleared out and I've been through it. And while we were there, we were brought by some of the rebel forces and then by local civilians to this compound here, where it is a scene of mass murder. There's no, no other way of putting, about it, putting it. If you look behind me, you can see what is basically a burnt out warehouse. And we're not able to go, uh, we're able to go inside. I'm not going to go inside yet to show everyone. But that is full of executed people. We estimate 53 bodies. We've counted them so far. The estimate originally was 40. We have eyewitnesses who are here. We will be talking to them later. They escaped. And we, they say 150 people were murdered here on the 23rd and the 24th of this month. Um, they say there are bodies of two soldiers who have been hands tied behind their backs. Uh, the locals uh, believe that they refused to fire on the people who were being held inside and that they were then murdered. Apart from that warehouse, it's, there are body, two bodies, we believe, behind the camera and uh, further over here, you can probably, we can actually look over there, Ed, where people are standing now, they're talking to one of the witnesses who's come back. That is somebody who survived the assault. He appears to have been shot, played dead and somehow got out. Well, We'll come back to that in a bit. Beneath where they are standing, there are believed to be more bodies uh, buried. Salim is here. He was one of the local people who knew about this from the very start. He heard this. Salim, tell us what happened, because this all happened on the 23rd of August. Is that right? Yes. Uh, 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 on 23rd of August, about 7.30, uh, a local time in the evening, local time in Tripoli. Uh, we, uh, actually, I'm living about uh, 200 meters from here, and uh, uh, I heard some people shouting uh, from this place. Uh, uh, really, this place uh, before is not um, uh, a military place. It's, it's a, next door. Yeah, 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 it's a next door behind behind this place. This place is before uh, uh, for uh, it's for uh, agriculture. Uh, that's that's yeah. warehouse, you know, for agriculture. You sure, can sure. see, right, soldier. And uh, uh, when when we heard the uh, the people shouting, we were about four or five people. When we come closer, we heard some hand pumpers and we had some guns are going on. I mean, the people are, and then we tried to come closer, uh, but we we saw some snipers above this building. There, there were there are this building there, mm -hmm. and there were some snipers who are shooting. So we we went back, mm -hmm. right? So after that, a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, three people were coming to our place there, and they are now in the hospital. They were injured. And they are actually were soldiers. Uh, they were um, captured here in this place, right? So we asked them what happened. They told us there were about 150 people were here. Actually, there are, most of them are civilians, right? So they were here. Maybe some of them since one month. Some of them one or two months, and we don't know. We asked them what's the number. They told us about 155. What happened? They told they come. They put this hand, these hand bombers, and then they start killing them. So we guess that about seven, ten people were escaped, and the rest of the people now uh, are, were uh, killed here. That's a, actually, it's a true massacre, right? Mm -hmm. Next day morning, we tried to come to this place, so we found the people of uh, military, and they told us, please go away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So we saved those three people in the hospital, and if you want to talk to them, you find them in the hospital. Um, uh, and then uh, we wait till last night, uh, uh, people, uh, this area were cleared from the military, and then this morning we come here and we find what you find actually. And these were civilians and they were executed? Yes, civilians. And what is the feeling that these people were killed always by Gaddafi forces or by rebel forces? Because there is concern that some of them, if they were uh, mercenaries, the rebels might have killed them. What do you think? No, 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 no. They, they, they killed by Gaddafi forces, that's for sure. Then that's according to the witnesses, if you, you can talk to them, and according to the people who actually escaped from here. Yeah. That's for sure. And they are killed by Qatari forces. Okay, well, listen. That's yeah, sure. Thank sure. you very much Thank you. For Thank, you for you. Thank, you. Thank you for you. Thank you. Thank you for you. Anna Reedy, there's an awful lot of work to be done here, as you can imagine, as to try and find out what happened. But it's one of the first instances that I can remember where there's, there's surviving witnesses, there's local witnesses, and the evidence is here. So I think there's a lot to be done to try and get to the bottom of what happened. Is. And just as a slight...
addendum to what is quite a remarkable and pretty gruesome uh, finding is a remarkable movement of the uh, rebel troops to the southeast. They're almost done the job. I, I said it was impossible only last night when I was talking to you, but it, overnight they have come far, far out of town and they're now moving uh, further out to where they say there's one final compound. Um, people are coming round to see and obviously as you can see they're, they're suffering a fair amount. It, it, it's, it's quite horrible. And we'll have the uh, pictures of that massacre discovered by Stuart and his team uh, in Sky News at five. In the meantime, in the last quarter of an hour or so, we think we've seen another NATO airstrike. At lunchtime today, we heard that there had been a strike on the international airport to the southeast of Tripoli. We think it is in the same sort of location. So clearly, they still feel there are targets to be found uh, down at the international airport. And of course, uh, gaining the airports here and making the port secure is key to getting aid in. We have heard also reports that the border is now officially clear at uh, Rajjadir, which is the Tunisian border, which means that aid can now come in also from the Tripoli direction, which is very helpful to the people here in Tripoli who are really running out of water now. They're getting donations into mosques in terms of food, so many people are going in to get their food after evening prayers. Mains water is also a very big issue right now. It's not been working for nearly a week, and many people are really struggling to have any water at all. So it's obviously a big issue for the National Transitional Council. Well, in another disturbing development, dozens of dead bodies have also been discovered in a hospital in Tripoli, with patients apparently shot in their beds. This report from Sky senior correspondent Michelle Clifford contains images of dead bodies. Decomposing bodies litter the entire hospital in Abu Salim, regarded as the last significant stronghold for Gaddafi in Tripoli. It's believed these men were shot as they lay in their beds being treated for their injuries. Staff fled the facility as fighting in the district escalated. The floors are covered with shattered glass and bloodstains. Some images are just too gruesome to show. Those entering the hospital wear masks to cope with the overwhelming stench of death. Medical volunteers called here to help can now only assist with the clear-up. We just collect the body and we uh, will go to, uh, to put them in the other hospital, in uh, Tripoli, Tripoli Hospital, the big hospital. It's not known who killed the men, but many appear to be from outside Libya, and Gaddafi is known to have hired in many of his mercenaries. But the National Transitional Council has denied that these were score-settling executions by its fighters. I think those bodies found in the, in the Abu Salim hospital are most likely killed by Gaddafi agents. Um, that's what they do. Uh, they have no mercy whatsoever. They have no regard for human life. But Amnesty International says there's evidence of abuses on both sides and has called on the NTC to ensure its troops are behaving properly. Security will be yet another challenge for council ministers already struggling with the humanitarian difficulties in Tripoli. Britain has offered medical support, food and equipment, but thousands in the capital are now in desperate need of help. The most basic services, the needy ones, are the ones that we are concentrating on now, which are the health sector, in addition to that, we also have the uh, electricity problem, we have the uh, water problem, we have the communi communication problem. This district of Tripoli has been at the centre of some of the fiercest fighting of the war. A few days ago, around 1,400 prisoners were freed from the notorious Abu Salim jail. Many have now travelled across the country to return to their homes. At this port in Benghazi, a crowd of anxious relatives gather. They're waiting for men they haven't seen in years. Then out of the crowd, one man finds his brother. For the rebels, these scenes justify the months of fighting to overthrow Gaddafi. Many of these people were thrown into prison simply because they opposed him and his regime. I was in Abu Salim prison, but finally we obtained a great victory and expelled the tyrant. Gaddafi no longer rules us. He has lost his legitimacy and may Allah punish him. The celebratory gunfire continued for another night in the capital, Tripoli. But Gaddafi remains elusive. And the legacy of the war is a growing humanitarian crisis that the international community is now being pressed hard to deal with. Michelle Clifford, Sky News.
Well, with the rebels now largely in control of Tripoli, the battle is now on for Gaddafi's hometown of Sirt. It lies between the capital and the opposition stronghold of Benghazi, effectively splitting the country right down the middle. So taking it, of course, is a key objective for the rebels. Anti-Gaddafi forces advancing on Sirt are engaged in fighting and this afternoon took the city of Binjawad. Well, Sky Security Editor Sam Kiley is near. Just in the last uh, five minutes, there have been uh, the last major uh, artillery salvos onto Binjawad uh, fired by the rebels. This is uh, the first time I've seen uh, rebels using very heavy artillery in a semi-professional way. And uh, that salvo was fired into the dead town centre uh, where the last of the resistance uh, facing the rebels, the rebels were just inside the town. Uh, there, we've just spoken to some rebels who've come racing past to celebrate, uh, saying now that the Gaddafi forces have uh, just in the last few moments uh, pulled out of Bin Jawad. Now this uh, is a very delicate moment for the rebels because they've accelerated down this road in a way that they really didn't imagine they would. Uh, they had not expected the uh, heavy NATO support from the air that they got uh, last night and yesterday afternoon which uh, destroyed a substantial amount of Gaddafi's heavy weapons which were being used to keep the rebels at bay. There have been at least three days of very heavy artillery duels between the two uh, and suddenly this morning there was a breakthrough and the rebels were able to uh, clear a Sidra which is uh, we've just come through uh, where there were some uh, burning oil tanks and some signs of very heavy fighting uh, and now they are on the verge of having control uh, of the whole of uh, Bin Jawad. Now the point about Bin Jawad, Lorna, is that uh, it's also known as Bin Garad, which uh, means snitch or traitor because uh, twice at least in the past the rebels have uh, captured Bin Jawad and then the local population has turned on them uh, on the, and on the first occasion uh, certainly they lost a lot of people but uh, nonetheless uh, it also represents the tribal fault line really between the east and the west. It's the last major oil terminal town uh, between uh, the rebels and Sirte, Gaddafi's hometown. And we know, of course, from NATO and rebel sources that the uh, Gaddafi forces are concentrating their efforts around Sirte. And uh, as um, Sky has been reporting from the southeast corner of Tripoli and out of town, Gaddafi's forces are fleeing in that direction, it seems likely, uh, and they are reinforcing that area. And there is expected to be a significant battle for it. But rebel commanders are saying that they have been reaching out to the people of Sirte so far. Uh, their entreaties to put down their weapons and join the new political dispensation uh, have, have met uh, with a complete silence. Uh, but now the, the wind is very much in the rebels' sails. Uh, I'm standing uh, actually between the rebels' big guns uh, and Bin Jawad, and uh, we expect to be able to push on a little further. But uh, what happens after nightfall, of course, uh, is another matter because this is a period in which uh, Gaddafi's troops are likely to want to try and consolidate. And there was rebel intelligence that there was a defensive line already prepared for Gaddafi's troops a few kilometres, about eight or ten kilometres uh, outside Bin Jawad on the road to Sirt. Now, uh, the, we've heard NATO in the air, we can't hear any airstrikes. Uh, but if they do consolidate in that area with heavy weapons, it's likely that they will face uh, NATO airstrikes fairly swiftly because the momentum, the momentum is now very much with the rebels and uh, in military uh, parlance, you never, want to, you, know, you never want to lose the initiative. If you uh, pause at this stage, you can easily hand the initiative back to the other side. Sam Kiley on the push towards Sirte. Well, let's return to our stop, top story now, the discovery of those uh, mass graves. Stuart Ramsey is here with me. And what does this massacre tell us, Stuart? I think it tells us that uh, certainly as the regime was falling, they were prepared to do almost anything, probably to get rid of problems or to deal with things as they were either preparing for the final fight or with, to withdraw. We don't know who was murdered in that warehouse. I have a suspicion, having listened to one of the survivors now, that he might well have been a soldier who had refused to kill people. And there were also, according to people who had come from the village, civilians in there as well. So I think there's been a mix of people. But I don't think it actually matters. What did happen is that they were uh, machine gunned down. Many of them were still alive. They threw bombs in there. They then set them on fire. A, there were 53 people inside this one warehouse. 150 in total, we think, have died. But other people have said to us that in other areas, men had been seen digging 
uh, into the night. They heard gunfire, and when they returned the next day, the area had been covered over. There were camels there and they, to make it look like a farmyard. I suspect that around this camp, this Hamas camp, there could be many more of these graves. This isn't a grave, of course. This is just a crime scene. They were killed, but we think there are also graves as well. And they were begging you, weren't they, to get this investigated internationally? Absolutely. The ICC was the first thing that the, uh, the gentleman who was talking to me with fant fantastic English said, please, please get this investigated. ICC, I think, is going to have a huge... That's the International Criminal Court, is going to have a huge amount of work to do here. Perhaps involving both sides, of course. It's not just, you know, there's ac accusations of both the rebels and the Gaddafi forces, but they've got a lot of work to do because some terrible things have happened here, as we know. But no doubt this was Gaddafi's forces. No doubt at all, according to the locals, because they went to see what the screen were coming out of this uh, farm building. It was used for farms, but it was right next door to the camp. They saw soldiers who told them to go away, snipers who told them to go away, and the next day, Gaddafi militia who told them to go away and fired upon them. There's that, no doubt that was committed by them. And just uh, separately, we think we've seen more NATO airstrikes towards the international airport, towards the south southeast of Tripoli. You've been down towards the southern suburbs today. What is the picture? Well, southern suburbs are incredibly cleared, and that goes on for mile after mile. I was absolutely amazed at the progress that was made in literally... Oh, 12 hours probably from the last time I was there through to the next time in the morning. And on the airstrikes, it's quite like the airfield has been secure for some time, but there is a village at one end of the airfield, which we're told by the uh, rebels when I was there is, is manned by mercenaries. They've been trying to negotiate with them. They've actually arrested lots and taken them away. They've given themselves up. But there was a hardcore still there. Uh, I suspect they've given them their final word. They're going to attack them because those are houses. I suspect most villagers have left. So NATO is probably trying to clear that area. We don't know for certain course, but that, I suspect, is what's happening. OK, Stuart, we'll see your pictures at five, I know. Thank you very much indeed. Well, the uh, chairman of the National Transitional Council has been speaking in Benghazi, Mustafa Jalil. He has said, he's made a promise to Muammar Gaddafi and his family that they will give them a fair trial, he has said, so clearly trying to plead with them to give themselves up. He's also made another urgent appeal for humanitarian help, and certainly we heard a news conference also given by the National Transitional Council, but here in Tripoli, saying that they're trying to get life back to normal and certainly we've seen children out on the streets uh, of Tripoli today wearing face masks and gloves picking uh, their way through the litter because it, the streets had been become disgusting I have to say so they're going out there with uh, bins and with plastic bags trying to clean things up so an appeal once again uh, from the new rubble government to get people back to work they want to get the water back on it's been off for, as I said for for nearly a week they're hoping they're going to get the basic amenities restored to Tripoli in the next 40 48 hours, so clearly working very, very hard to get that done. So uh, it's a big job ahead of them, certainly, but they need to show that they're in some sort of control. And it certainly seems that the, the young children of Tripoli who are watching this war firsthand are listening today. Well, certainly we'll keep an eye. As I said, we'll get those pictures on for you from Stuart at five o'clock. Lots more from Tripoli throughout the day, but now back to you. Anna, thank you very much. Well